Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel, guys. You've got your boys, Bert and Lanny here, your favorite dividend investing channel on the network here. But guys, today's not going to be about dividend stocks, dividend ETFs, dividend funds. We're going off, off script a little bit here, aren't we, Bert? Ooh, We are. This is going to be an interesting one. It's going to be a topic we haven't really covered too much on the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel. So you know what? Before we tell you the big reveal, make sure to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. And we're really looking forward to your feedback and your comments on the conversation we are going to have today. Well, guys, <clears throat> if you haven't heard it already, but there were 11 spot Bitcoin ETFs that officially started trading on Thursday, January 11th, guys. 11 spot ETFs. In the cryptocurrency universe, guys, what a lot of the uh, communities out there have been waiting for, hawking the SEC, SEC's Twitter is hacked, what are they doing, what is the approval process, the paperwork's filed, the paperwork's offline, the paperwork's back online. Um, so it's here, guys, Bitcoin, Bitcoin ETFs are here. It reminds me of when um, Dan Gilbert was flying down to Miami and everybody was trying to check his jet to see what he was doing to get LeBron. And he was tweeting out all the fake pictures of like, no, I'm actually on vacation. It's an it's a old Cleveland reference there for everybody. That was when LeBron came back the second time. But yes, like let's talk about some Bitcoin ETFs, Lanny. Bitcoin ETFs, guys. And we'll get to the question, are the dividend diplomats buying the Bitcoin ETFs or buying the spot ETFs um, that are essentially backed by the by Bitcoin. Um, we're only going to talk about five of them. And with the five, we're actually going to talk about the one-day trading price that, that we think and can see that they experienced on the first day of trading, even though it was very hard. Mm -hmm. um, and if you guys are out there looking for the price movement on these, you guys know as well. But what the first day pricing looked like, what the market caps look like for these ETFs, what the expense ratios are, because that's something you need to pay attention to. What type of an exchange they're traded on, you know, the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, um, et cetera. And specifically for the Bitcoin, how and who is the custodian working? Uh, yeah. Do they have it outsourced? Is it self? Is it through a third party? So we'll get into all of that. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to talk through. And again, these are we're going to talk through five. We're not talking through all 11 here. So you'll have to let us know, too, if there's stuff that we should know about the other six that we're not covering here. Please, by all means, share it in the comment section below. Yeah, and you guys definitely got to uh, let us know, too, if what we're talking about here, because, again, we went through, you know, the ETF sites of each respective one and pulled out, you know, majority of the details and facts. But you know, again, the interpretation obviously can be subject to somebody or somebody else. So definitely let us know in the comments if we say something on this video that, hey, no, here, check this out, because this is what the, the right way to look at it is. That's right. So we're going to start with number one here, Lanny, the big kahuna. We're talking gray scale Bitcoin ETF, ticker symbol GBTC. Yeah, most of them make the names for their ETFs pretty easy, actually. It's uh, kind of you know I like it. You know I respect it when the ticker match. Some, some are funny. We'll get to the, we'll get to the one funny one. Yeah. Uh, so so who is the custodian on this one, Lanny? And what exchange is this one trading on? Yeah. So Grayscale, you know, and you guys can correct me in the comments, but I believe they're with Coinbase for their custodian for Bitcoin. And they're trading at about forty dollars and sixty nine cents right now for this ETF. Um, and based on the first day of trading under uh, the actual Bitcoin spot ETF, because GBTC was actually already a fund prior mm -hmm. to Thursday. So they actually already have 28 billion, I believe, mm -hmm. under the cap or under, you know, of assets that have been managed um, within there. Somebody could correct me there. Um, so they just converted from what they were to the Bitcoin spot ETF. So that's why there's so much funds um, already in this ETF. Yeah, the interesting thing with them is they have a pretty high expense ratio, especially when you hear ETF, you think low expense ratio. It's not the case here at GBTC. Their expense ratio is 1.5%. And I wonder, Lanny, how much of that's a factor of the previous structure to where there were significantly more investments, significantly more items to monitor. Now moving over 
to the Bitcoin ETF? Yeah. Is there a chance uh, yeah. to have some savings on there for the expense ratio? You know, they said pri- this is actually a decrease. The prior expense ratio was 2%. So right before today's filming, they were at 2%. But hey, congratulations. You now save, you now save 25%. Yeah, um, down to one and a half percent. Well, I'm. I, they better watch out because we have some other ETFs that we're going to talk to at different expense ratio structures. That now that they're not the only player in town, they might. There's a chance to have some flight if they don't start taking care of that management fee. Exactly, and you know they are currently on the New York Stock Exchange (GBTC). So again, one and a half percent expense ratio. Again, backed by Bitcoin. All right, that, that Coinbase. That's number one here, Lanny. Let's talk numero dos. We're heading over to my brokerage account. This is where I use. I am a big Fidelity person here, so we're talking FBTC Fidelity's Bitcoin ETF. Yep, guys. Let's talk about FBTC, which is probably going to be if you're a dividend investor, yeah. you're an investor out there, you're looking to finally maybe dabble into Bitcoin. You know, if you're on Fidelity, it might just be easy to do FBTC. Again, no recommendations here. But yeah, they were actually down over two and a half percent on the first day of trading from what I could see. Mm -hmm. Um, Trading at $40.88 at the close. That's actually pretty funny because this has been the one I've known the most about because every time I've walked into Fidelity, it is right smack dab on that page. You see it? It's beautiful today. So the Fidelity Wise Origin Bitcoin Fund. FBTC, an easier path to crypto with the mountains in the background. It's absolutely beautiful. Crypto so, equals mountains. Yeah, so you're right. So there with Fidelity having, what, trillions of assets under management, this is probably the easiest path of resistance for people that are looking to get some Bitcoin alloca- allocation alongside their other portfolio and add it to one of their listings. You know, it's pretty interesting, too, because the market cap right now or the net asset value is only about $20 million on this ETF. That is interesting. So they're starting small, apparently. Uh, Start small and work their way up, get their feet wet. But I have no doubt that over time, Fidelity is going to juice this up because they have the power in the investor base to do so. Yep. And right now, the expense ratio, um, it's going to be a quarter of a percent, 0.25%, so way less than Grayscale's 1.5%. And it's actually free right now. They're actually waiving the management fee up until August 1st of 2024. So yeah. you have almost, you know, they call it seven months from now until you start getting the management fee component. Interesting. And if I'm reading that right, um, they're the custodian, right? Self-custody, yep. yep. That's how you can have a little more flexibility at the expense ratio. If it's self custody, you're managing that. You're not. There's no custodial expense going out the door. So it's a it's a potential game changer for Fidelity compared to some of these other places as well. They own it. They're the custodians. They they have full control over it. And it's all going to be about to the user's risk tolerance. Is Fidelity self custody better than the Coinbase custody or the cold storage custody? You know, let us know in those comments what you guys think about Fidelity going self custody. If you're a crypto or a Bitcoin a Bitcoin enthusiast, you know, obviously, you know, we're not those guys. But if you are, let us know. Maybe we'll have to get that Fidelity stock report. Have to do some research ourselves. What's interesting is this is actually, and this one actually trades on the Bass Exchange or the Commodity Exchange. So just uh, just keep that in mind as well, which is probably also speaks to why it's a little bit lower of a market cap too right now, or the net asset value. Yeah, that's fair. Let's move into number three here. Um, we're moving to ARK Invest, the ARK 21 shares Bitcoin ETF, ticker symbol ARK B. This one, interesting. Another small market cap fund here, Lanny. Another small one. Market caps only 10 million. 10 million guys. That's Tiny. what they came out, came out the gate with. Yep. Tiny. Now, now, guys, keep in mind, we might be talking about the net asset value of the exchange traded fund, but keep in mind, billions of vol- of dollars of volume was traded in a day. But that's buyers and sellers just, you know, moving back and forth, you know, market makers, you know, doing their moves. And um, yeah. 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 But on this one, so your day one trading, while GBTC was flat, 
Fidelity's was down 2.6%. ARK B was down 6.48%. So they got smacked around. They closed the day at 46.78. Yeah. And each one you'll find out is very interesting too. Um, again, Fidelity's was 20 million. This is 10 million. ARK's also doing a free or waiver of the management fee. They're only going to be at 21 basis points. Maybe that's their kicker. Um, and it's until six months or the first billion is invested in the fund. Yeah, um, so how expensive can you... for July. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say how high is the fund the management fee have to be if you only have a ten million dollar market cap? Right. It's expensive uh, can't be that high. But all right. So like GBTC, their custodians Coinbase, but unlike GBTC in Lake Fidelity, they're on the BATS exchange. Yeah. So you'll realize right. there's not it's out of these five, every one has a different component. And that was the beauty of us putting this five together yeah. because not one is cut the same. Yeah, that's right. So let's move on to number four here. Vanek, the Vanek Bitcoin Trust, ticker symbol H-O-D-L. Hoddle, hold on for dear life. You've got to love the fact that they stole that ETF ticker right there, guys. Um, don't know much about Vanek. If you guys do, let us know what your thoughts are about them. Um, they kind of borrow the expense ratio, probably piggyback and say, yeah, we'll also do a quarter. Yeah, sounds you know, good. The, yeah, the management fee. Also traded on the BATS exchange like Fidelity and ARC. Uh, but they were also down 4.26% at 52.85 on the first day of trading from what I could see. Interesting. Yeah, and they have a larger market cap too. That I think they're... They're going to be one of the larger ones on this full list. They're $75 million market cap. So they're carrying some. Correct, more. correct if, that's, if you see something different, but you know, we saw 75 million. Yeah. So that's interesting. The other key piece is their custodian is Gemini. So they went away from self custody in Coinbase and they went to Gemini. Is that the Gemini, Lanny? That is Gemini. You know Gemini. Yes, we do. The Gemini. So that was number four here. That was Van Eck. You want to tell number five, Lanny? All right, guys, this is a, another big bear, big elephant. You know, one of the big dogs that's here to play, I think, too. Mm -hmm. The king of the ETFs, the largest ETF, you know, player in the game, guys. We're talking about Black Rocks, you know, iShares, mm -hmm. Bitcoin, ETF, or I-B-I-T, I-Bit. Oh, Black Rock. Yeah, I mean... It's fascinating. They're also dipping their toes in with the market cap at 10.6 million. So small, unlike Fidelity, a small entrance into the arena, down 4.69% on their first day of trading with that price of 26.33. I can't imagine this one's going to stay small for long for the same reasons why we said Fidelity has a chance to grow it. I would imagine BlackRock does too. This one trades on a NASDAQ exchange. So the first of the five that's on the NASDAQ and, you know, GBTC on the NYSE. So, um, and the custodian that we have down here is Coinbase as well. So correct us if that seems to be incorrect based on our sources. Yeah. Uh, so there we have it. That's, that's the five. Um, I know we kind of ended quietly with BlackRock, despite the fact that they're BlackRock, GBTC, FBTC, ARCB, H-O-D-L-I-B-I-T. Lanny, overall, what are your thoughts here about Bitcoin ETF? How are you approaching these? I'm watching, you know, guys, I'm not I'm not investing into the ETFs, you know, just, uh, you know, it's definitely a, a slice of the investment game that just, you know, I think all the bankruptcies obviously are hopefully making this better. You know, hopefully this is one of the, Overall, like not to say this was an outcome directly, but indirectly, hey, if the ETF was created um, and you have these large institutions backing, if you want to invest into that cryptocurrency, then, hey, this seems like it could be an OK route to go. Um, I'm concerned, obviously, too, about institutional and large pension investments. Um, could be good or bad, just obviously all depends on the fluctuation of, uh, of, of Bitcoin. Yeah, I mean, just because it's in an ETF and you're not holding it separately doesn't mean that the risks of Bitcoin go away. Um, and I think that's an important thing that everybody has to remember before they run out and start buying these. You still have the exact same volatility that cryptocurrency and Bitcoin 
has, and we know the wild swings over the last few years, it hasn't been a smooth sailing ride. There's been a lot of ups and a lot of downs. And just because you're not opening up your own wallet, you're going to some app um, and holding it yourself and you're buying an ETF instead doesn't mean that changes. Exactly. A hundred percent. And not only then, I mean, there's another little element now that's kind of more apparent, um, you know, with the custodian feature as well, because not only do you have to trust where you're trading at, whether it's grayscale, fidelity, you have to, you have to always be kind of concerned where you are trading it, but now you have to know where, where's the Bitcoin being stored. Yeah. So you have to think about that level again, that, that next degree, yeah. not only is Bitcoin. Okay. That's one level. Okay. Where am I trading it at? Okay. That's it. Okay. Now where's the Bitcoin held at? So you're, you're, you're even like, further step removed from knowing that yourself because you would have to do that research anyway. And now you're outsourcing it to Fidelity, to BlackRock, to ARK Investments. Right. So not to say like you should, you know, go buy a ledger and just own Bitcoin directly and that's it. And you yeah. cut out at least two of the two of the things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, look, this doesn't change what we're doing, how we're thinking about it. And I don't really think it's changed how you're thinking about Bitcoin either. If you allocated a portion of your investments to Bitcoin this is an option for you. You have another option and another way to invest in it. If you like investing in cryptos, if you don't it's like right. them, yeah, don't consider it. Yeah. It definitely makes it easier. And we felt like we had to talk about it yeah. again, not for the views, not for the likes, not for the subscribers, but it's, you know, it's kind of like this thing that's happening without it. it, it there's something yeah. in the room without us addressing it. Yeah. It's a big story. Cause look, it's like, I told you, I, the image again, it's right smack on fidelity and for it to get to fidelity to be on there that where it's offered to everybody else, that's a big step. And that's a big achievement for the cryptocurrency fans. And I will leave it at this as of right now, Vanguard absolutely refuses to have anything to do with it. Um, and to give a frame of reference on the net asset values, you know, VOO Vanguard's S and P 500 is almost 1 trillion there. Are, I think last we checked was like 937 billion. Um, and even, my little small VYM is 60 billion. So just give a frame of reference of where those ETFs are at um, and where these ETFs are starting at. So they've, they've got some ways to go. I know I think everybody feels like they're going to just won't, you know, blow this thing up within a month or two. But hey, time will tell. You know, we'll be watching. We'll get the popcorn ready. Yeah. And everyone, so we'll tweet about it. We'll, we'll post here on YouTube, talk about it just because it's kind of fun to monitor because it's an exciting change to the market. Now, the one thing that's going to be interesting is, is, you know, obviously no dividend is coming off of these, um, no income yet. Um, obviously, I think options trading is to be determined for most of these, but, um, you know, I'm sure everybody will be in the loop when that happens. And, oh boy, that's when things will get really interesting. I don't even want to think about it. So everyone, let's think about the spot Bitcoin ETS now. Let us know what your thoughts are. What's your Has this changed your strategy at all? Are you investing in them? Let us know down there in that comment section below. Guys, we appreciate you guys for rocking with us. Like the video if this was helpful, informative at all, if the screenshots were helpful. Um, we'll put a nice little chart throughout the video. You know, you know, like this video if you haven't. You know, subscribe. We appreciate it. Appreciate the feedback, guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think we're missing something else here, Lanny. Oh, and you guys are either with us or you're against us, Jack. That was Bert, The Hurt, and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats. Over and out.